throughout the country, depending upon where you are in the country tonight, what the status of those votes are, whether they're being counted, to be counted, separated, haven't counted, awaiting it counted, that's the magical question. In Nevada right now, we're counting our votes, as it appears at around 9.30, uh, 9.30 or so, our time, the Secretary of State's office apparently released the counties to release their results unofficially. And the flood of information began to throw up flow throughout the counties. Um, Brenda Heidi, as Fox News plays at the Republican Party uh, party here at the Rowan downtown Reno, the expectation is the president's uh, due to speak in the room I was at, in the East Room in uh, February. So uh, the room is thinning out some at this hour. There's not much left, um, as we've been here for quite a few hours. But we're awaiting those remarks of the president as he did tweet online uh, to a Twitter uh, center speech, or a Twitter uh, noted speech tweet, alleging that uh, he was winning up big and that there might be theft going on in the election. Nevertheless, the president is more or less keeping to his word on that uh, proposed speech here shortly. 
I'm going to go ahead and give you some brief updates of what I've seen here in Washington County at this hour. So, at this hour, numbers are coming in uh, throughout the county. And I'm speaking specifically to Washoe County, nowhere else. Um, at the federal level, Joe Biden appears to be leading us here in Washoe County. At 51% of the vote, tallies so far in, uh, out of 223,850 votes, Joe Biden has 114,894. Uh, followed by Donald J. Trump. With 103,222, with 50, 64% of the vote. Unique uh, race, next down, next race of the ticket. Patricia Ackerman is keeping it close in Washoe County, um, as this is a unique situation. Typically, uh, Mark does pretty well in, Mar in Washoe County, um, but he's winning only by about three or four points right now. Ackerman, 104,000 votes, 104,958 votes. To Mark Amadeus, 108,259 votes. At this hour, out of 218,451 on the U.S. House race at this hour. Um, in State Senate, that is close, very close. Uh, Heidi, first term Senator Heidi Ganser leading the 34,945 votes to 51, with majority of staff right now, 51.23%. Uh, to Wendy Hardy Jackins, 33,264, 50 to 48, 77.77%. Um, again, the margin is within three points of this hour out of 68,000 votes. Again, vote tally still coming in. Um, upset question, upset. There is a potential upset. For upset, the, uh, right now, uh, in the assembly race, assembly 31, a race I'm watching, Jill Dickman, who is in the room right now, who's in the room tonight, is leading uh, with 51% of the vote, 51.12% of the vote, at 17,188, to skip incumbent Skip Daly's 16,434, 35 votes at 48.8% uh, out of 33,623 votes. Uh, so, yeah, I think that both of the the of the the president there. Okay, sorry. So, going on, uh, going back to local. Races and I will post those shortly. Um, I didn't get to city council so far. No change in city council races so far, as the incumbents, all the incumbents right now, either are leading, seem to be leading, or have a wide margin. The closest race so far is the Breckus Draculich race. Two percent difference between Breckus and Draculich. Breckus leading 11,000, oh, 11,065 votes. With 50.43% 50, 50 of the vote to JD Rackle, which is 10,875. A difference of under 1,000 right there. With out of 21,000, actually, a difference of under nearly 300, 300, 310 votes. A difference of only 310 votes out of 21,940. Close. This, is, this will be a close one to watch. And uh, <laughs> and, uh, and I got out Sparks. The comments are both leading out right at the moment. Uh, Anderson with a nearly 15 point lead against uh, Clinton Smith in Ward 3. And in Sparks Ward 1, Abbott with a nearly 11 point lead to start off. Uh, the difference between uh, the Abbott start off race in numbers right now is 652, 602 out of 510, uh, 500, 
5,102 5, votes. And and they've just got, so that's one less state for the Senate being called. Montana was, a, was uh, expected to swing into the Democrats category. Tumbled in the recent days, but Gaines has won a close one apparently, according to Fox. Um, I'm going to verify with my own eyes on this one from another source on this, but Fox is calling the Danes race. That should lead. Uh, that should lead to very uh, interesting uh, tea leaf review in the days after, as uh, Steve Bullock is probably one of the best candidates the Montana Democratic Party could have failed it in this cycle. Uh, and Dane made a few mistakes in the early in the early outside of the race. So, um, with 80 percent of votes, they're saying for the Fox, that might be an interesting uh, point of information there. But uh, again, I'll check the seal of staff on that. Um, Washington County Commission. Um, this one is a bit of a. Keep your eyes on this one. Alexis Hill is leading in this race by nearly 11 points uh, at this hour, uh, with 26,715 votes, 55.43% of the vote per the county, uh, to uh, Commissioner. Vice Chair uh, Berkeley, 21,480 uh, votes and 44.57% of the vote at the tower out of 48.195 votes. And in the other county commission race, uh, incumbent uh, Von Hartung is leading by 15 points out of that race with 28,254 votes out of 57 with 57.93%. To uh, Miss Hills, Miss Baker's 20,512, 17 votes with 42.7% of the vote. And I'm actually looking at uh, in Washington County, uh, Mr. Pum Mr. Pumo in the Justice of the Supreme Court race, leading with 38.23%. Actually, I'll tell you that. Herndon, sorry, uh, Doug Herndon is leading in that race with 94,503 votes to 47.2%, 47.2, not quite majority status. To Ozzy Fumo, 76,511, 50,551 with 38.23%. Unique, this race has one of the highest, none of the above ratings I've seen tonight in the rank of 14.57%. And nearly 30,000 votes in that category, or 29 to be exact, 29,166 uh, votes in the bank on that one. And, uh, sorry, keep my eyes to the window here. And right now, um, in Washoe County, question one, Board of Regents, looks like it's going to go down in Washoe County. The margin is pretty heavy. Uh, yes is at 37.62% to the no, 362.38, which means we the status quo for the Board of Regents stays as is. Question two. Changing the language to match the 2015 decision, court decision, brief court decision. Looks like it's really a predominant yes, 63.1 for 4 percent to 36 to the no, 36.6 percent. Uh, question three on the pardons board. Is that 56 percent to the four, uh, yes, 40, uh, 44 percent no? Say question four on voter, uh, voting rights. Leading yes at 58.67% versus the no at 41.33%. Uh, and the renewable energy po uh, promotion is leading at 53.35% to 46.65%. And that's where we're at right now with the races I'm looking at. Um, statewide, the statewide call. 
And look at Secretary of State's uh, page here. Um, right now, according to the Secretary of State, Washoe County is in the bank heavy. Joe Biden is leading in Nevada at 500, half, nearly over half a million votes. Uh, actually, 500, 538,163 votes at 50.858%. Biden is leading Nevada to Joe, to Donald Trump, the incumbent, 47.55% uh, or 505,866 votes. Right now, counties, the only counties outstanding, to the, according to the Secretary of State's office, Lander and Lincoln, and those are actually two of the smallest counties in the state offhand. I don't know, firsthand. Um, according to the Secretary of State's office, it looks like Nicole Cannizzaro is leading in her race down in Vegas. That is notable, as she is the majority leader and one of the key seats needed to retain the state Senate to help the Senate Democrats hold on and maintain or gain a supermajority. Um, same story with Gander's seats. Uh, Senator Gander's seats. Looks like she's going to retain that as well. She's in the retain, uh, leading in that race as well. Um, so as I'm looking up really quickly here, through the races of question, no, no real surprises here at this hour. Uh, no surprises, no, 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 excuse me, no knockouts, but punches at this point tonight so far. Liz Becker looks like she is going to not be successful, is not, is, uh, anyway, is Scott Hammond, incumbent Scott, Senator Scott Hammond, looks like he's holding with a 55.65% lead in Santa District 18. Pete Bocachia, former city assemblyman, uh, member of the Rural Caucus, leading pretty well out there, out there at Santa District 19 at 78.2% at this hour. To Miss Sevax, uh, 21.48% uh, challenge. And I'm going to switch to the state assembly. Those races are really interesting to look at. Um, Richard MacArthur looks like he is doing very well in this challenge against incumbent uh, Tony Monk, Monk uh, with a 52.15% lead. The economy wants 47.55 down in Senate in Assembly 4. Um, <laughs> Jason Patterson looks like he's leading right now 56, 59.48% to uh, his challenger, his fitness, or Edward or Eddie Casey. Uh, 40, he's, lead, uh, has a, he's at 40.52%. Steve Yeager, will, the donuts will be back. Mr. Yeager looks like he's leading with 55.75%. Tom Roberts, unopposed, looks like he'll be back pretty easily here. Um, Annie Black has won her race outright. Notable, Annie Black knocked out, um, I think he's a four term incumbent, three term incumbent, Chris Edwards in uh, Senate District 19. So she may be a new unique face to the Republican Party in Carson City, as Chris Edwards is notably known as one of the most more conservative members of the caucus. Annie Black challenged uh, Chairman McDonald in the last uh, chairman election. So that could prove to be a very interesting platform for her to be in state life again, uh, rather than uh, Mesquite City Hall. Uh, so, um, notable race. There's number uh, assembly district 37. Andy Matthews looks like he's leading uh, Shea Bacchus in what used to be Jim Marchant's seat in that district. Uh, Andy sitting at 50, majority plus a little bit, 50.79%. To Shea Backus is 49.321. That seat is notable because Andy, uh, former, the former president of the Nevada 
uh, Policy Institute, and uh, I think a you know, Boston, a Boston University or Boston College grad, uh, uh, potentially could be a pretty uh, has a pretty bright future here ahead of him if he's successful in this challenge. Uh, was also uh, very close to former Nevada Attorney General uh, uh, Adam Laxell as he's the press secretary for the morning in Nevada, I believe. So uh, keep an eye on that race and that gentleman, uh, what are the outcome in that situation? Um, Pico, P.K. O'Neill looks like he'll be making a return back from the Nevada State Assembly after a bit of a hiatus. Uh, to Assembly District 40, which is on the edge of the town, South Park Town. Oh, looks like, okay, looks like the Trump family's coming in here. I will uh, cease and let, uh, let these remarks take place. Well, uh, I'll be back shortly uh, to re reconvene here. To reconvene here.
say that we would have gotten it would have been nice. That was all. But there's a possibility, maybe even a good possibility. In fact, since I saw that everything has been changed and the numbers have substantially come down just in a small amount of us. So we want that obviously to stay in play. But most importantly, we're winning Pennsylvania by a tremendous amount. Thank you. 
Yeah, and all of a sudden you're going to find hundreds of thousands of folks just happen to be in some trash can behind the thing. But I think that's what we were talking about. The, you know, the event you hear about that is the vote for the president and supports the president and tweets just now. No, it's not the only question. It's the only question to say that he has. The president had some amazing victories tonight. He's been more on the Republican side of things. Look at this that the United States Senate is likely to say the Republicans. The um, House races I mentioned just beforehand, not only um, did we win in some of those swing districts, but a lot of the women that were back from the in this party released in the last month. There's so many things they talk about and be proud of tonight and say in a posture of, I'm convinced we're going to win. I believe that these races are going to be called for me and for us and for our movement. You can't wait me for another 24 hours instead. Now, Liberal headlines will be tomorrow. What will everybody be saying? But that he just went a step too far. Yeah, that he came to the He walked into a reality uh, tonight. One, taking advantage of his life and the campus and the competency, uh, and made a very political statement about where he thinks this is going to go. Well, I said this before, I don't know many people, Martha. What struck me was he sort of did a jujitsu. He said that it wasn't, even though he said he predicted we would come to this moment. He says they are taking us to court, suggesting the Democrats are somehow taking him to court. I, I was confused by this. But in his mind, he said he, he, won. he won this election. And that there's something being done by the Democrats to try to undo this hearing. And he sees them as an initiative in terms of inviting some litigation. But to my mind, the idea that he would say that, you know, what he wants. I just don't understand it, and I think it's, 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 it's